Hey guys, welcome back to another video tutorial. Um, today we're going to discuss a technical topic that might be a little bit boring to some of you, but it's one of those um, things that you need to have uh, as a 3D artist. It's, it's one of those skills that you just need to possess, because it's super important. Um, and that is when, for example, you have a mesh in ZBrush that's super high poly, super dense, that's used for games or in movies, and you need to get it into Maya and get a decent topology. So, Today we're going to discuss that topic, um, um, getting a new topology on a mesh, also known as um, uh, retopologizing. It really, it's one of those things that it's not that interesting to do, um, but you need to know how, at least know the basics of it. So that's actually exactly what we're going to do in this video. So just sit back and watch me try to do this. So why would you do this was the first question. Well, for example, right, I've got the t-shirt. Um, and I'm, I'm now at the stage where I actually want to start sculpting it, but in, in order to actually sculpt this, I need to have a good topology, right? So I made this using a mask extract in ZBrush, which means that the uh, new mesh that get extracted has the same topology as the mesh that it got extracted from, in this case from the body itself. So when I look at, him, at, the, sorry, at the shirt, this topology is useless, right? So you can see that everything goes down straight, you get this weird part over here, so we don't we don't want to use it we can't use it in any shape or form so we need to change this so there are two ways of doing this the fast and bad way or the slow and good way um, of course the uh, fast and cheap way would be going into ZBrush into, uh, into the zero measure and just hit zero mesh and pretty god that it works out um, you might get lucky but chances are you won't so we need to do this manually in Maya um, it's not as difficult as it sounds, it's just a little bit cumbersome, it might take a little bit of, of your time, but it's it's quite soothing, just put on some music, get some coffee, tea, beer, whatever you drink, and just sit back and start clicking. So, I got this uh, high poly mesh, um, I'm going to export both of it, so I've got this mesh, this high poly mesh, and I've also got a mesh that is uh, zero mesh, so I can show you why you should not do this. So let's get back to Maya. So, I'll first grab the low poly one, this one. So, at first glance, you know, it actually looks pretty good. You have quads, everything is quad, uh, but it has some serious issues, except for the, well, the faces here. You see uh, the, the sea fighting that's happening over there as well. But the main issue is that uh, ZBrush doesn't know about spirals, so it just creates them by default for you. For example, when I create, create this, uh, grab this H2 over here, you can see it just continues on and then it goes down here for some reason and it goes back and then it goes down here and it ends up here and then it goes back up again and then it's 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 kind of pointless right you can see this this will not work out great especially when it comes to rigging and animation this will cause some major issues but it's also a simple reason why you want to do this um, for example right for when you work for games you don't want the inside to be visible because it's just extra extra polygons therefore it's useless because you don't even see them in the game right so you you, you, you want to be able to delete the inside but usually you would just grab this extra over here, you grab it and then you hit delete and then you're done, right? Except for that I also delete some parts of my entire mesh. So the way to solve this is just go in manually, you have to go and click all the faces here and then you can see this works out okay, but then you have these faces here that you can't see anyway, so we might as well delete them as well and then you go all the way around, it's really tedious, especially when you come to this part over here, then you have to go down here again, etc. And then you create these really loose spaces that don't do anything so it's not a really good solution it's not really a sexy solution so I'm going to show you how to do it properly in Maya it's really not that difficult but you'll see right so this one I'm just going to delete because useless right so I'm going to import my high poly model which is massive so this is 591,000 uh, triangles first thing I'm going to delete my inside because I don't need it I think there's an edge here as well. I'm gonna get this well. There you go. So there's now it's just the actual mesh itself. You can see that the mesh is super dense. It looks good, but it's useless, right? So first things first, uh, we, we need to make sure that our uh, modeling toolkit is open. So this bad boy over here. That's the easy step. And next one is that we have to make this surface live, which means that uh, every new object that you create or every new triangle, first whatever, will be snapped. To this object, in this case our shirt, you can do that by just going to this one over here. It's uh, it's a make the selected object live. When you click on it, 
you can see now you get a message here that the shirt etc is now live and now in a moment too you can see here as well that the uh, transform constraint is now set to live surface so I can't uh, anymore select the actual object because we don't want it anyway so now it's live so everything that we will create um, will be snapped to this mesh now you can do this in two ways right you can actually make a, a plane here you can just drag on the grid you can see that it's, it snaps it by default and then you can move it around and you can see it snaps right but that's really cumbersome and I don't want to do that so I'm going to show you a different trick in this case I'm going to start with the neck and in my modeling toolkit I'm going to go to a thing called quad draw now when you click on it in this case with keyboard uh, most shortcuts you get a massive list you can see here but I'm just going to walk you through them so you'll see right so the first thing I want to do is just I want to click right and then you can see you get a vertex a green dot over here a green square this is a vertex right so I'm going to create another one and another one and another one now you can see that when I hover uh, outside my mesh that you, I can't click anymore so I'm going to click one more time now you can actually just continue on by clicking if you want to all the way all the way around but in this case I'm, I'm not going to do it so next step would be holding shifts right when I hold, hold over see right it actually tries to make try to make a face out of it in this case I'm going to click here and here so we now have two phases done for us and now we can actually start moving things around if you want to so when I hover over the actual face you can move the face when I hover over vertex you can actually move, over, uh, move the vertex and you can see it snaps right you can't go outside the actual mesh and same for the edge so you can, only, so you can move that as well cool easy so far right I'm gonna move a little bit a little bit better like that okay so how do you get more faces out of this well if you hold tap you can see here that it says extend but if you hover above it uh, next to your mate mesh you can see that it starts creating triangle uh, faces what you could do is just drag right and then actually create a face uh, strip but as you can see right they're tiny which will create a lot of detail and we don't want that especially at the start you want to have big shapes so I'm gonna do all this so we're gonna go for big shapes right so I'm gonna hold tap on my keyboard and I'm gonna hold over the edge here so you get the extend thing then you can just drag and you can see that you get a new face again don't go for too much detail uh, first rough shapes and that's it so I'm going to want a little bit smaller and again I'm going to drag it out and I'm going to move my vertex so it actually follows the actual general shape of the mesh itself and again drag it out and, and I don't care about these things over here at the moment right the actual uh, things that are sticking out I don't care at this stage because I just want to get my base mesh done once you have that you can actually add more detail so same thing here, I'm going to move my vertex so it actually follows the curvature of the actual mesh. One more time. And let's do it one more time, like this, right? So you can see now there's a bit of a gap here, right? Between the actual mesh and our new made uh, face. If you hold control, you could actually insert a new mesh, or an insert an edge loop, sorry. In this case, I, I can do it vertically or all the way across the entire mesh. So I'm going to add one here, and you'll see when I click it, that it will snap to the actual mesh by default, so you don't have to do anything. So if you're here, you see it actually snaps to it perfectly. Now again, you don't want to add too much detail, so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, and I'm going to extrude this again. And again, and you just keep on going all the way around. Okay, so say for example, right, I've, I've, I'm working on this, and I this edge is too much. I, 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 I don't want it because it creates too much detail. Now when you hold Ctrl and Shift at the same time, you can see that my mouse cursor now changes into a cross. So I can delete the entire face. Or an edge if I want to. So you can delete faces or edges. And again, I'm just going to hit Extend. So Ctrl Shift is uh, the Delete. Okay. And again, hold Tab to extend it. And go all the way around. In this case, we'll make it a little bit straighter here and again same thing I'm going to move my edge here you can see that it's not perfectly snapping but if you now move the edge you can see it, it just snaps to it perfectly and all the way around again same thing here hold control to insert an edge loop and I kind of want my faces to be like the same size it's a little bit difficult but again insert edge loop I still move this here, move this one here, 
I'm trying to do this really dirty. So as you can see, this is not the most fun job you can do, but it's really important that you actually know how to do this. Um, because this is now one of the uh, standard practices. So make something with ZBrush. Uh, then throw, throw back to Maya, create, create a decent topology using this method or a different program. Actually, there's are too many, I'm going to delete several of them. This one's wrong, this one's wrong. Again, I don't want to create too much detail at first. So at this stage, I don't care. There we go. And now around here. Take this one. Snap to the actual edge of the mesh. All the way around. Then I'm going to grab one here. I'm going to make it straight. And then I can actually close down the entire edge loop. Which is again, hold the tab, drag it, and then when you hover over the actual edge here, it will snap to it. And then the faces are welded together. So now you get this really okay start of it. And of course you can grab this one here for example as well. And you can just drag it down. Drag it up if you want to. Um, in this case I don't want to. I'm going to do a little bit differently like this maybe. Snap it. There we go. Same thing here. Push it down. Snap it. There you go. Okay, I'm going to create an edge loop here. So we get this really nice edge here. Now it's like parts like this, for example. What, what do you do with it? Um, it's yeah, it's a little bit difficult. In this case, what I can do is I'm going to add an edge in between, and then I'm going to grab the holding tab. I could just drag it down, for example. Or delete this face and touch it together, and then you just drag it down. Um, I prefer to do it like this, uh, but I can imagine well that you can actually go all the way around here and then go back up again. That's also a valid way, right? There is not one way of doing this. As long as as it works out your uh, topology, and then whatever makes you happy at the end of the day. Okay, so let's do a safe in here. I'm gonna push it down. I'm going to make this one go around. Again, I don't care about if like parts of this don't match up properly yet. It's not that important. The same thing for this one, right? Actually, I'm going to undo this. I'm going to push it all the way across. Because again, you can do the same thing here. You can just grab the mesh, to grab the edge, and just screw it over. So you create that triangle over here. And push up. And etc. So and this one will hook up with this one. So we might need to change that topology later on a little bit in Maya itself, or by just using the regular modeling toolkit. Insert a loop here. There you go. Okay. For example, right? What's also a really cool trick is when you hold Shift, you actually can see that it says relax. So you can actually smooth out those edge loops over here. So the a little bit smoother so that you follow the mesh perfectly and when you hit um, relax it, it will still uh, um, stick to the actual surface so that's still perfectly fine to do this so in this case I fucked this up so I'm gonna I save my selection right I kind of want this edge loop to flow to make an actual loop because right now this is a spiral again right you can see this is a spiral and I don't want that so this this is called for good old-fashioned manual labor I'm gonna do it like this. Maybe we can delete this edge over here. And here as well. But this is triangle, so I'm gonna again make it multi-cut. I'm gonna do it like this. Just move it. Then you just move it to the side. Now this one is good again. Um, but yeah, this is really easy to do it wrong. As you can see, so but it could also be, just be the better way is just to delete this this part again and to do it again from scratch. So I'm gonna get control again, but this is not pretty, right? So I'm gonna delete this face here. There you go, it's gone. Should be here, a little bit lower. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna weld something together. I'm gonna weld so. This bad boy to that bad boy. There we go. So now it actually follows this. And we can cut here. 
leave this edge and now we have a perfect loop see okay perfect loop there you go again click on quad rods to actually uh, activate it again then you can see then you can move on and do the same thing for the other ones so i'm not going to do everything because i made a bit of a head start already i'll show it otherwise it would just take forever I don't want to bore you guys that much. So in this case, uh, right, I can actually, actually click on my mesh, which means that the service is not live. Keep that in mind. So if you can click on it, it's not live. Okay, so I'm going to make it live here by clicking up top. Make it live, then select my actual mesh again, and then quad draw, and then it turns blue. So if it's not blue, it's not, um, you're not actually doing uh, the uh, quad draw again. Okay. So I actually got to an interesting, interesting part, if you know what I mean. Um, like this part over here, right? So do I want this actually to continue like this? What's what I had first? So like this, which is fine, right? It's a good way, but I kind of want to follow this shape here, right? So I want to follow this loop here. So I kind of want this part over here to meet up with this part over here. So we get this continuous loop of all the way around, which I really like because I think it's a little bit better. But that means I need to fix some stuff here, like this angle over here is super harsh, right? You can see this is like a 45 degree angle, you, do, I, you kind of want to avoid that, you kind of want everything to be again be smooth. So I can hit, for example, relax, does it for me, but then I get this really uh, stretch on the face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this one, then delete this edge in between, do it like this, and then I can add one again. But now I think I've got it gone, ooh, that's bad. Okay, let's have a quick look. Let's keep this one around. Okay, and again tap and extend. There we go. Now we can add this loop there. That's much better. So it now follows this line, which I kind of really like. Uh, it's, you don't have to do it, of course, but it just looks prettier, in my opinion. And then we can have this one go down. So like this, and then this one back up here. And then there's something we need to solve. Actually, I think we might do it differently. I'm going to add another edge here. This is a little bit better. Then we can add an edge up here. Oh, we've got a double face here, I think. There you go. And then we can do it like this. We also need one here, but that can do it later on. Not that interesting. So, this is pretty much how you do it. Um, it's not that super, it's not super difficult. It's not, super, like, it's not like magic or anything, but it just needs practice so think about the topology how you want it to go same thing for this one right I just made it go all around here so I also need to make sure that this one here hooks up with this space over here otherwise we still get a spiral and I really don't want that so make sure that I go continue on in this line which means I'm gonna to need to add more edge here but it's fine so topology is not that super difficult but it just you need to do it so I'm gonna merge these two together real fast oh god not like that So I can continue, if I can actually get this to work, there you go, which one Got wrong. Okay. And again, don't forget to use shift once in a while, it's just to smooth out your edge looks a little bit better. Perfect. Because you want them to follow, uh, you, you want them to be organic, right, your edge loops. Okay, we can actually close this part here as well. Again, hold shift because this looks really weird. This looks still this still looks weird, but I can fix that later on. See now it's really nice and organic, which is perfect for exactly what you want to have. So let's move on a little bit further. Maybe we can do this one here, and then we can close this one on its own. This, and this, perfect. This is not perfect, right? You can see there's a really big face, but you know if we can maybe. Maybe it's a little bit of relaxing. Uh, oh, I saw that. This face here is loose. Okay, extends. There we go. Much better. Okay. Let's try this again. Yeah, see, it's a little bit better, but you know, it could be a little thing for later on to fix. We'll see, we'll see. So this one should just continue on all the way around. Same for this one. In this case, I'm going to add more. So again, control. You can add edge loops. In this case, I need a whole lot of them. So I'm going to do this one first. And then this one. 
and this one. Then I'm going to add the line in between, the edge loop, and then I can close these ones as well. Like this. Again, I'm going to relax it a little bit so you get a nice organic topology. There we go. Then we need one here. Oh, wrong button. This one. Sorry. Control. You can close this one if you want to. Like this. Um, but first, we're not going to do that though. But maybe. So I kind of want to have this one go down here, probably. Could be. I don't know yet. Let's leave this one. Again, Control Shift is Delete. And then we're going to add one again. So Control Shift Delete. Control to add an edge to Control Shift to delete anything you want, pretty much. Uh, this one's a little bit difficult, though. Uh, let's see. What if you first do this? And then you do this. And this. Again, you get a big face here. I really don't like that, but. This is better. Okay. Again, let's relax it. Let's hold, uh, hold shift to relax it. Nah, this looks pretty okay. This looks pretty okay. Next one. Close real fast. Just, just make sure that you think in edge loops. So that they are uh, closed loops. That they don't go on forever. So they are not spirals. So they're closed. Um, but yeah, this is... I wouldn't say difficult, but it's it's a challenge, right? Okay. There are several things to keep in mind, especially when you're doing a full body retopology. Then it can then it can get really weird because you need to make sure that this one is fucked up. I can see it already. Yeah. When you, when you're doing a full body, for example, then then you need to take into account the muscle structure and the bone structure, etc. In this case, can I do it like this? I can do it like this. Not perfect, but no, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. This one shall continue on probably up here. That would be ideal. I think we have ready. I'm just gonna do this part and then I'll just do it for myself because <laughs> this is not that really interesting to look at probably. I'm gonna add this to be in between. Again, I'm going to relax them. It also makes sure base, uh, so that the faces have the same size roughly. It's perfect. We want that. Like this, and then like this. I can actually get it to work. Would be nice. There it is. Okay. And again, shifts to relax everything. Yeah, it's still here, definitely. Oh, you get a little bit of overlap here. I don't want that, so I'm going to. Shift I this bad boy and move the actual vertices. I can't at least. Like this, that's better. Okay. Yep, that's better. Etc. 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 I'm just gonna finish this um, all by myself. This is not something you probably want to stare at for like an hour or two, so. Um, next topic will probably be about rigging, uh, advanced rigging, uh, maybe a facial rig, because I'm thinking of doing that one. So I'll just see you next time. Yeah.